you very much. Namaskar, uh, Assalamu Alaikum. It is absolutely, uh, absolutely a pleasure to be back. Uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting uh, uh, me for this, uh, inviting me to this wonderful uh, session. Um, uh, congratulations to the India Foundation uh, for putting together what is clearly one of the most important topics that confronts uh, us all, uh, not only in India, but across the world. How will technology take us forward? And it's not technology in its simple sense. The shifts that we are beginning to see are so dramatic that it changes completely the way humans interface, uh, the way uh, uh, services are delivered. It's quite an incredible uh, storyline. The meta era is about artificial intelligence. It is about uh, nanotechnology. It is about new forms uh, that will drive the economy. Uh, I think Swamiji is quite right that for many of us, the linkage to spirituality of these shifts is very important. Uh, and I very much agree with the minister that the, the shifts that he described are truly going to fundamentally alter the way uh, services are delivered. The one question that I have and the one that I hope you will be addressing in this conference is, is the state itself ready for these technological shifts? Is the state itself ready for the meta era? And fundamentally, what I'm, what I'm asking is whether state capability and the system of state management is able to keep up with the meta era itself. Or put another way, how does the state look like in a world of meta era? Let me, uh, let me give you a, a couple of examples. Today, uh, India has launched the world's largest procurement of electric vehicles for public transport. Now, uh, what, uh, what, is, what India is doing is that it put out a bid for 5,000 buses for five of its largest cities. But it's not just about the physical acquisition of buses. What India is, uh, is putting on the bid is the full management of bus services, the electric bus services. Uh, and basically, various companies are bidding uh, from their perspective and their ability to actually manage urban transport, public transport in the cities using electric vehicles. The question to ask here is not only whether the technology of electric vehicles, specifically the battery technology, is capable of meeting the needs of today's world, but whether the city governance is capable of overseeing the delivery and the management of electric vehicles. In today's India, the bus companies that are managed by the uh, city bus uh, organizations are not uh, at the global level as the technology itself. And without the type of governance arrangement of the bus companies, there is a chance that these vehicles will come to a standstill and not be able to deliver the services on the ground. Take another example. India is absolutely the cutting edge of uh, using, uh, using IT system for teaching. Uh, Diksha has revolutionized the way uh, teachers are trained and students learn. But the question is that at the school level, is there accountability of governance and management that can use this technology to actually deliver the services on the ground? Fundamentally, the question that we need to ask is whether the dramatic shifts in technology changes the nature of government and changes the nature of governance. As long as it's about delivery to the individual, it's a private good, technology will fit into the market. But if it's delivery of public goods, management of air pollution, if it's delivery of network goods, management of uh, electricity distribution, then the institutions that lead to, for example, the management of DISCOMs has to be looked at. Today, one of the biggest challenges that India faces is, well, is whether in its energy transition, the DISCOMs are going to re be reformed in terms of, its, of their governance to manage the energy transition. The 500 gigawatt challenge that the Honorable Prime Minister has, uh, 500 gigawatts of renewable energy that the Honorable Prime Minister has put in front of India, will it be delivered? If it gets delivered, will the, will the governance of DISCOMs sufficiently change to be able to absorb 
uh, that uh, uh, that released uh, really that renewable energy. These kind of shifts in in government and governance, I think, is equally an important question to ask in a in the world of met of changing uh, technology or in the world of meta era. Uh, same thing overall is state capability. We know that when economic transformations happen, the capability of states often lag behind. Today, India has introduced the uh, a very important uh, state capability or state capacity commission. It has launched it precisely because it recognizes that the whole state administration, uh, whether it's at the center level, at the state level, or at the local level, have to be completely transformed. If it's not transformed, then the ability of state to actually use the technology to turn around and provide delivery to citizens is going to be questionable. There is, I think, a, let me say it in an extreme form, there, see, there may seem to be a sense that the arrival of new technology will make government irrelevant or governance irrelevant. Uh, we know that cannot be true. So the question is, what is the future of the state, in, state of government and what is the future of governance that must match the technological changes? And I think that's a fundamental question that we have to ask. And indeed, through asking that question, see what kind of evolution of state governance must we see. Uh, one of the things that I've learned uh, uh, working in India over five and a half years with the World Bank uh, is you cannot look at India as a country. India is a region. It is multiple countries. Uh, today, we know that a Tamil Nadu is not the same as Bihar, is not the same uh, as Chhattisgarh or Maharashtra. Each and the size of these states are size of countries, UP, size of Brazil. Uh, West Germany, size of uh, West Bengal, that states of that size with very different demographic and economic systems will require very different types of approaches. The future of India lies in the states of India. And in this particular context, building the capability of states to actually manage the arrival of the type of technology that we're seeing is going to be fundamental in capturing the benefits of, uh, of the meta era. And I think uh, the other part of the meta era and its linkages to governance is uh, something that I suspect uh, is going to be one which we have to be careful about. I think there is a movement in today's world that given the shocks that we have seen, whether they're pandemic shocks or climate shocks, the world is folding inwards to say we will have production in our countries, uh, we will we'll make sure that we are self-sufficient. So the notion of a global trading system where each, all of us depend on each other's comparative advantage is being, is being challenged. Here, the assumption is technology will move fast enough that it will change comparative advantage and that the move towards production inwards can indeed be efficient. Uh, one has to challenge that notion and indeed challenge it from the point of view to see, can technological innovation actually lead to a world of autarky? If it does lead to a world of autarky, then what is keeping the world moving forward, which is our interconnections across society, will indeed be, a, will indeed be challenged. And this, I think, is a very, very important aspect of uh, the linkage between governance, uh, na changing nature of the state, and the arrival of the meta era. The last point I'd like to make is the future of local governments. Uh, India, in its constitution, uh, in its federal system, uh, emerged at a time when the center and the states mattered. The local did not matter. Over time, with urbanization and the strengthening of the rural area, panchayats and urban local bodies have become very important. And in this context, urbanization, which is so fundamental to the move towards middle income, means that the future of India will not only be at the state level, it will be how cities and towns are going to be managed. The pandemic that we are going through, uh, the COVID-19, has been one that really emerged out of urban centers. We discovered across the world that urban public health had fallen behind the needs of the time. And the COVID is focusing us to rethink urban public health. Technology is there to help us, but
But the question is, how we govern our cities is going to be very important for us to be able to absorb the technology at the local level. I always say it's fascinating, and, and, and actually I tried this uh, experiment out. I was once giving a presentation to about uh, uh, a thousand young men and women in Mumbai, and I asked them to raise their hands to a couple of questions. I asked them, do you know who the chief minister of Maharashtra is? And everyone's hand went up. I asked them, do you know who the mayor of New York is? And about, I would say, 60% of the, uh, of the young men and women had their hands up. I asked them the final question, do you know who the mayor of Mumbai is? And barely 10% of the hands went up. And I think that that indicates to you how much the governance at the local level, at the city level, is something that needs to be rethought and reshaped in, uh, in the context of India. But not only in the context of India, this is a South Asia story, including my own country in Bangladesh. So the proposition I leave you with uh, today in the hopes that the conference will address is in a meta era, what, how should we reimagine government and how should we reimagine state capability? This is an equally important question to answer uh, uh, along with the question of how technology is changing and what technology will mean for service delivery. Thank you very much and I wish you full success in this conference. Thank you.